Good evening again, everyone. I'll, I'll call to order the November 9th Public Affairs Committee meeting and remind people that after this one, uh, stay tuned for finance, please. So item one, uh, I'll take a discussion on the receipt of uh, the various property maintenance, public information, and parks and rec reports. Anybody? All right, well, I have a comment on each one. Um, a question first for our property maintenance supervisor, uh, Mr. Brown. Um, can you kind of just give us a, a, an executive summary of what's being done? What are the best practices for winterizing our community centers? Both Roland and, um, and Lamont are, are now closed, I guess, for the winter. Uh, so tell, tell us how we're going to prevent further deterioration so that both can open and the libraries at each one can open again in the spring. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, so we're planning on just kind of doing it the same as we did last season, last year. Um, we'll turn the water off. We'll have a company. A private company come in, they'll blow the sprinklers or we'll go with the fire comp with the uh, fire marshal to make sure that the building is safe as far as the sprinkler system. We'll turn the water off to the building. We'll blow all of, all of the lines with uh, air to try to drain the building completely. Um, we'll put dehumidifiers up throughout the building uh, to try to keep the mold down as much as possible. And we'll just we'll just try to make sure that you know, like I said, we want to get all of the water out of the line so we won't have any freezing. That was our biggest concern since last year was our first time winterizing the property. Um, and when we went back in, we had very minimal damage, which was um, which was very good. So we're just hoping for the same results. We'll just kind of do the exact same thing we did last year and uh, hope for the best. And you, you feel that you're going to be able to... Uh... Uh, work against the mold, keep the air uh, uh, fresh or circulating or something so that we don't don't have any uh, problems with further, as I say, further deterioration. So we, um, I check the property constantly just to make sure that um, everything looks good, check for any new mold growth or any mold growth or um, any anything that is out of the ordinary. So the building is being constantly checked, even though there's no activity through the building, the, it, it is being constant, constantly monitored. Um, and we do have dehumidifiers running that will try to keep the moisture um, out of the building that will try to minimize the amount of mold growth uh, throughout the winter season. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, since there's no heat, there's not there's not a lot we can do except to just constantly check, and um, if we see anything, we'll just address it as it comes along. So, um, and I, I just two other little pieces uh, that goes for the shovel shop as well. The shovel shop has heat, so and that's going to um, continue to run. Correct. Yes. Okay. But I, I know mold is still, you know, a, a factor. So we we're, we're or animals or whatever. You're still checking on that and stuff like that, right? Definitely. Okay. All right. And and so in terms of the heat, you're saying uh, that becomes a factor. Does it make sense in any areas to run um, any kind of um, alternative heaters? while somebody is monitoring them or uh, during a period of coming, you know, during a course of a day, uh, coming back to monitor them. I don't know. Uh, I mean, you know these things, I don't. I'm just trying to make sure we, we understand best, you know, what the best practices are. I understand. Uh, that would be a lot of supplemental heat. I think what we're doing now until we figure out exactly, until you guys figure out exactly what direction we're going to take. I think what we're doing now is the safest and uh, most okay. effective uh, thing that we can be doing. Okay, thank you very much. 
You're very welcome. Um, okay, another, uh, going to the public information, just uh, wanna thank the staff. I know that over the uh, weekend, uh, or two weekends ago, maybe, uh, it, the uh, website showed a, uh, a new arrangement. It's been reorganized a little bit um, and uh, it's a different look. Uh, hopefully, uh, I think it was intended to uh, give residents a, a, a better navigation experience. So um, I know they're receptive to uh, your feedback. Uh, it should be a, a nice, a nice uh, step forward. Uh, also for parks, just want to call out uh, a thank you for the Halloween events and the bonfire and hayride uh, events. Uh, uh, Ms. Rebitz, uh, are you, you're invited to make any comments, uh, you know, follow up uh, if you want. Um, thank, you. thank you, Commissioner. Um, both of the Halloween events, um, forgive me, I, I am under the weather, so I have my camera off. But both of the events at the community center properties went very well. Lamont Citizens United um, worked with me to host the event over at Lamont. And we had, um, I'd say, at least 50 children with their families playing games, uh, the, the costume contest, Commissioner Pransky, um, and a whole bunch of other <clears throat> places volunteered prizes and time which we greatly appreciate. And we're listing on our Parks and Rec page to thank them all. The um, Commissioner Brocking, thank you for your support and communities that care that helped us with the Roland Community Center event. We handed out about 45 to 50 treat bags that night. And then um, the hayride and bonfire that was on Friday, November 4th, couldn't have done that without the help of Public Works, um, the Parks Department, Alan Brown, specifically thank you sir so much wouldn't have happened without you scott lynch thank you for all your help coordinating with the lamont fire company and we had over 400 people during the course of the night enjoying the fire unlimited hay rides um, movie the rise of brew and plenty of snacks and refreshments nice to hear thank you and hope you feel better you might want Thank to disappear you. at this point and completely <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Otherwise, I'll, I'll move uh, receipt of those reports. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, moving to two, item two, receipt of the committee meeting minutes. Is there any discussion on those? Well, okay, I'll just thank those committees for their work and uh, commitment. Um, also let them know that we are still eagerly awaiting that plastic ban ordinance and the stream naming uh, recommendations. So um, looking forward to that. And again, thanks for all their work. Um, move acceptance of all those uh, meeting minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. How about item three, the staff meeting minutes? Any comment, any discussion? Take a motion to receive. So move. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Old business, item four for public affairs. Um, following up on the Cheltenham Deer Management from last week. There were some outstanding questions. Um, Ms. Township Manager. Uh, sure, so um, we reached out to our insurance company um, with respect to insurance. Um, the Cheltenham Deer Management would need to secure their own, um, but the our insurance company agreed to work with them to help them secure it. Looks like the estimated cost would be about $2,500 to $3,000. Uh, I haven't heard back um, following the submission of the application, whether or not they were able to price it out yet. Hopefully we'll hear this week um, going forward. But I think the outstanding question was whether or not um, the board would support um, 
Cheltenham Deer Management's uh, insurance coverage for for the season. Question? Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner Um Allison, uh, does that have an unlimited? number of hunters associated with it as long as they meet the qualifying criteria or, or is there ceiling to how many hunters can participate? You know, Mitch, I'm not quite sure. I know that um, they were asked for a roster of their membership. So it might just cover the people that are on that roster. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I, I, are we hearing that the ball is in all our court as to who, who's gonna be paying for this? Um, so I'm listening to what the uh, pleasure of the board is. Yes, Commissioner. I mean, yeah. I think we discussed last week the fact that, you know, the service that they're providing has significant value. And I thought a ceiling of somewhere between $2,500 and $3,000 seemed a fair amount for, you know, the $2 million liability coverage that supposedly was there. I see Chris Dredge. So Chris, if you have a an update on it maybe, but rather than have me talk. Uh, I don't have anything different from the last couple meetings that we had, Commissioner. Um, I was under the impression that the township would cover it this year. And then moving right. forward, we kind of all get our act together and yeah. be ready to go by the time uh, things started in September next year. Yeah, Chris, Chris is right. Uh, at the last meeting, we, we had agreed that uh, due to the lateness in the season and the desire to move this forward quickly, uh, that the township will absorb the costs. Uh, Mitch, you're right. I think we uh, expected it to be in the 2,500 to 3,000 range. And that in the future, we would ask the, uh, the deer hunters uh, to um, acquire their own liability insurance. Uh, in order to, to um, uh, speed this up then and put this, because uh, uh, I know they're anxious to, to the season yes. began ages ago. So right. uh, I, do we need a, uh, I think we need a recommendation from this body. Mr. Um, Rappaport. Yeah, I just go ahead. Hey, Mr. hey Chris, Rappaport. before you get started, can, I just want to have a conversation with you about Parkview. Absolutely. All right. That's I don't want to problem. do it tonight online, but just on park view. You and yeah. I want to talk to you about that. Okay. Give, give me give me a shout tomorrow. I'll be at the okay, fire we'll all day tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Okay. And and there was a question I think that wasn't quite finished last week also about which which staff member on our in our team. Now we know that you know the county is responsible, you know, because they're but but who on our staff is the one who's, uh, you know, or what department does this fall under? Should we assume it's a public works uh, responsibility? Chris, who is Chris taking it, ownership? Yeah. Yeah, Chris had makes, agreed that he would give a report each month. Yeah, yeah, and it, that makes sense. I mean, they can report to me and um, we'll say Bo and or Bob, Bob Dominic, and we'll make sure that there's reports. Okay, as, as long as we understand the chain, there. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, so I guess the the motion should be contingent. Uh, you know, we want to move forward with this, taking responsibility for the insurance. Yes. Uh, contingent on ongoing discussions, right? Yeah. Uh, does that sound enough like a motion? Uh, yes, but so, Madam Chair, yeah, yeah, just just so that it's us. it's real clear for uh, Allison or the township staff. Um, we, we should uh, get an endorsement to our insurance policy or whatever we need as soon as possible and give Chris and his crew the go ahead to uh, start bow hunting. Well, it won't be an endorsement on our policy. I think they'll get their own policy and we'll reimburse them for the cost. Okay. Or somehow we'll make it work. Okay. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Uh, in terms of other old business, anybody have something? Uh, I'll just mention real quick that uh, Public Works got a number of compliments and good stories this past week. Uh, uh, if you haven't already seen uh, the child in, in Glenside, I guess, uh, 
Uh, that's a lovely story. Y'all should look for it. Uh, also, some compliments on on the beautiful leaf cleanup. Um, just getting getting real good feedback on the on the quality and how it looks and how how sparkling it is until more leaves fall down. <laughs> so thank you for Public Works. All right, we'll move on to new business. Uh, A, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve an amendment to the contract with NV5 to, or, yeah, uh, to design a revised trail alignment for Chickeny Creek Trail Phase 3 project at Gimbel Field. Um, I guess, Ms. Tangent Manager. Yeah. Um, so we have been working on this project on the Phase 3 uh, for Tiffany Creek Trail for quite some time. As you're aware, we've um, secured three different funding sources for this project. Um, the first part is currently under construction. Uh, this is for the second part, which is funded by DCNR and DVRPC. Um, when our former township manager started with the township, he took a look at these plans and suggested realigning um, the, this part of the trail, which is off of Harrison Avenue, uh, up follows the parking lot uh, to connect to where this, um, to and kind of goes around the ball fields back into the woods to cross the creek. Um, he suggested that since it's near the, the sewer line and the trees, it might be uh, beneficial to move it to the opposite side to where the, the side of the road or driveway where the, um, the fields are. So we've we've taken a look at with it at it. We met with uh, the Little League, and everyone agreed that it is a, a superior alignment. So Matt Ludwig of N5 is here to talk about um, the proposal um, and answer any questions you might have about it. Madam Chairperson. Yes, go ahead. Um, Allison, so a few questions. One of the things is the increase is I, I, it's fifty four thousand. Is that a reflection just of the change in the uh, alignment uh, uh, in terms of where that's going? So that's just the, the fiscal question. And I have some functional questions. It, yes, it is. I believe, um, Matt, if you have any further detail on that, but I, it does require, it's not as simple as just drawing a line on the map, unfortunately, um, because we have to re, or Matt and his team have to recalculate stormwater um, and all the other requirements that go along with it. So it is significant added work. So in that re revision and that realignment, was there any uh, consideration or was it in, that, um, in that evaluation, was anything uh, considered with respect to the proposed development at 222 Church, since it does create a whole new alignment for Harrison Avenue and it could have an impact Either from a stormwater or from a you know from a um, uh, a land use you know in that direction. Um, I have to look into it a little bit further, um, Matt. I'm not quite sure if you've taken a look in, into it at all. Right, because I was involved in the you know in the original discussions with PEC it's, uh, and 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 V five, and my concern is that that the two 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 church. Um, activity, which, you know, while in litigation does represent something that's going to require engineering and some accommodation, there has to be an awareness of that because, you know, should that proceed, there may be an impact that hasn't been uh, accounted for. So I think that's an, you know, that's an important element. The other thing I'd add as a separate issue is um, most of the walkers who use that, that part of token trail and the extension across New Second Street, there's yet to be um, a defined way to for traffic management for both, you know, walkers for, for both pedestrians and bike safety, plus the proximity to the schools. So as they're you know doing this planning, I just wonder if there is yet another phase of adjustments that's going to be required with respect to road marking, um, any kind of traffic calming or specific lights and specific um, controls that are going to make the crossing of that new second street area uh, off of Tokeny Creek, you know, something uh, safe. So I just want to make sure that in these plans, 
that those things are in the calculus so that we're not moving forward with a trail and everything hasn't been accommodated. I know it's been a while since it was discussed, so I'm just looking for some guidance to make sure that wouldn't be a neglected element. Um, yes, um, I know we have completed um, submissions to PEMBA um, for pavement markings and signage as part of this the second phase. Okay. Yes, that that's correct, Allison. We we um, we have an approved um, highway occupancy permit from PennDOT, um, and um, I have a, a few slides I can share that that kind of give some visuals um, of what that crossing will look like in relation to the roadway and the trail. Um, if, if if everyone is ready for that, that'd be great and helpful. All right. All right, so I'll, I, I just have a few slides here just to talk about everything else um, um, that Allison had mentioned. So this is the overall project that will connect Harrison Avenue, go through Gimble Field, uh, cross Tookany Creek, and then cross New Second Street and link up with the footpath um, along Tookany Creek Parkway. So the project that's under construction right now is the area that's in red that will consist of clearing the path from Gimble Field down to the bridge, construct the bridge, construct the footings, install the bridge. This will be a 130 foot long prefabricated bridge that will get swung into place by a crane. And, and that's projected to happen probably in the February to March timeframe, uh, pending the contractor schedule and, and how winter weather goes. Um, and then that phase of the work will be completed uh, in the spring of next year. And then um, the second phase that Allison was mentioning is the rest of the project within the green area between Harrison and Tokeny Creek Parkway. That is the portion that's funded by the DCNR and DVRPC grant. So that will essentially finish paving on both ends and um, will be the um, that, that crossing at New Second Street. So I'll get to that crossing in a second. Um, but first, I wanted to cover the revised alignment within Gimble Field. So this, the yellow line there shows the original alignment up to Harrison Avenue. And after working with Township staff in the Little League, uh, it was agreed to shift that alignment to the other side of the driveway. So in addition to the redesign, uh, we'll be uh, revising our stormwater management plan, submitting that to the Montgomery County Conservation District uh, for permitting. So this is just a really uh, schematic view from Harrison Avenue at the entrance of the park, what the difference in the original plan and what the revised plan will roughly look like for that new trail. This will look much nicer than this very crude illustration shows, uh, but this just gives you an idea from that perspective what, what we're looking at with this project. Uh, as a part of the stormwater management for this project, we'll be planting um, a large number of trees throughout the park. Um, so that will be included in, in with the bid of the project. So this gives a, an idea um, of adding in trees to the existing park area, but then also where um, you can see the uh, laser pointer out here in the area along the 22 church property where uh, the construction on right now, we'll be planting trees along this area um, to replace the trees that, that were removed for um, the trail path. And then this is this is a, an image to give you an example of what the new street crossing will look like. Uh, this is where the, the Penny Pack Trail crosses Turwood Road right now. If you're familiar with that. Uh, will be, this is called a, a rectangular rapid flashing beacon. So when a trail user approaches and they'll activate this, this is always dark, um, but they will activate this light. It's a very, very high intensity rapid flashing um, that goes off. And you can see there's, there's going to be overhead flashers, and then there's going to be a set of flashers on either side of the roadway that will go off every time somebody activates 
this light. So these have been used all across the region, the United States. They have a very high yielding rate. And, um, and it, so in addition, at, at the new Second Street intersection, the only difference is going to be is that we were able to work with and implement a raised crosswalk um, at, at this location. So pavement will hump up slightly and hump back down. So it's it's a signal to people when they drive across it to, to slow down when they um, are approaching that area. Mr. Ludwig, uh, just real quick, are those uh, uh, flashing lights yellow or red? They're yellow. I guess, I guess that uh, it is a challenge to me because yellow usually means caution, not stop. And even though I, I see the state law, you know, you must stop at the crosswalks. Uh, you know, we, we know the traffic problems in Chilton. Is there a way to get red rather than yellow? It's not as um, effective. That, that would take a traffic study at this intersection. So um, for this particular Even though a light, school is, is uh, very nearby. Mr. Ludwig, if I can enter, I think it is essential to have a traffic study. I, I know where that Terrawood uh, Drive crossing is. And the truth is that we have a much higher level of traffic mornings and afternoons that uh, that Tookany Creek Parkway and New Second Street is a victim of high degrees of traffic and lots of people that do not obey what are reasonable speed limits, even exceeding uh, the blinking lights, which exist, you know, basically uh, 25 yards up for um, for the school zone and for controlling that. So I don't see how you can proceed with you know with this design without having a corresponding traffic study knowing that there is a significant challenge or issue and the volume of traffic both off of Tokeny Creek Parkway and on um, New Second Street, uh, particularly coming off of Church Road and that kind of thing will be dramatically higher than your Terwood Drive property where, where you've made uh, adequate accommodations, but we already have challenges without having you know pedestrian crossing and the access to that additional area, which we're it's very welcome, and I you know we want to see it happen. We also don't want to not have everything every precaution in hand. So I, I would urge that uh, concurrent with the the plans that you have here is there. You said you know something like it it could there could be a traffic study. I think a traffic study is an essential component, and you know I, I think if we're adding. Uh, an amount of money I you know we'll look for grants or whatever but it's really critical that that traffic study give us a sense of assurance that there's not going to be you know the risk in in doing the trail expansion that we put some uh, pedestrians kids uh, as well as bikers at, at any kind of risk commissioner um, if you would like we can have um, our traffic consultant. Uh, take a look at that. That would work. I think that would. And, and Mr. Ludwig, the other question that I had was, is there any impingement or any uh, issue on the um, 222 Church Road proposed development? Is that something you're aware of? Because I think that's very uh, close uh, to, to where that is. And I'm wondering if that will have an impact or whether you're, you know, you're going around the periphery of that property on the, uh, the, I guess the couple of acres that are deeded to the township is open, the proposed acreage that's gonna be open space. So I wanna make sure um, that, I don't think that was in your original plans, but I have a feeling that part of that uh, trail may in fact um, be you know, impinged by the development that's gonna extend Harrison down um, from, uh, from Church Road and, and that area. Yeah, so as, as a part of the agreement between um, Mr. Bernstein and the township in order to obtain the easement, excuse me, that the, the property that the trail sits on, that the township, the township um, took possession of that parcel 
and all of the work that is related to this trail is taking part on that parcel. No, none, none of the trail work will be taking place on what is now the 222 Church Road parcel. So there, there's a clear property line between the work that is being done with the trail and the work that could happen on that property. Um, I understand that, uh, that the 222 Church uh, plan had a desire to connect to the trail. Um, you know, that, that, that's obviously something that would have to be worked through with that development plan, but, um, it, it, there, there's, a, there's clear, there's a clear property line between the two, um, pieces of work. Okay. I appreciate that. As long as that's accounted for and, and you do know, or you may not know, but that right now that proposed development is in litigation. So including by the way, Mr. Bernstein. Madam Chair. Is, yes, Mr. Um, Ms. Schlagwood's simple question, maybe I, I'm not aware or didn't hear clearly. You mentioned where, where the DVRPC grant was coming in that was going to cover the paving of the path. Is that with a porous pave? It will not be with the porous pavement. Is there a particular reason on a trail that we're not using some sort of porous pave? Considering the flooding issues and everything else, um, there's a, there's a number of reasons. There's a lot of pros and cons with porous paving, um, particularly in a wooded area. It, it's a high degree of maintenance for porous paving, um, especially this time of the year with the leaves falling. It would have to be uh, you'd have to get a vacuum truck back out there um, to 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 vacuum, especially this time of the year. You usually have to do it about four or five times a year. Get a vacuum truck out there um, and what you want to do is because th that the pavement is porous you know it's got pores in it it's allowing the water to infiltrate through it um, by allowing debris such as decomposed leaves and other materials to clog those pores you, you that's why you want to get the vacuum in there and do it so um, it's not to say that you can't do it um, now with with the, the current phase of the project that's being built with the PennDOT funding, um, we are putting down a, a compacted stone base that would preclude porous pavement. Um, in, in this, starting where my pointer is right now, all the way back through uh, the wooded area, the bridge, and up to New Second Street, um, we wouldn't be able to do that. There, there, there exists the possibility of, of doing it in the open section because we're going to be redesigning that. Um, that, that that's, that's something that could be looked into. All right, I'm just, I'm just... Our, our stormwater management plan, the, the reason that we're doing, what we're doing is calling a, a riparian buffer restoration. So because we're going to have the increased runoff from this ribbon of asphalt um, parallel to Tookanee Creek, the planting of the trees is going to be the offset for that increased runoff. So we there's a there's a set of calculations that um, we're using that come from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, and will be confirmed through the township and through the Montgomery County Conservation District in order to permit this project. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's a good segue to to point out that. There is a bit of irony in the creation of a paved path through the woods that, uh, and we know that there are a lot of, you know, there have been, uh, uh, you know, complaints from citizens who have seen certain trees come down, um, you know, and of course we're replacing trees, but it takes a lot of time and maintenance to get young trees uh, to the point of being specimen trees or older trees. And um, I guess the question, uh, you know, beyond the irony is uh, who is taking responsibility for maintaining these new young plantings? And just how young are they uh, planning to be? Uh, and yeah, how will they how will they be nurtured? What kind of guarantees are there? Uh, how are we handling that? Uh, Commissioner, the township will be responsible for maintaining the trees and um, ensuring that they're healthy. 
um, we just submitted a grant, uh, I think it was last week, um, to acquire some of the trees if we're successful. And in that we had to provide a, a maintenance and operations plan, which accounted for uh, making sure they're watered and they have deer protection fence on them. So, uh, and pruning as necessary. So we will be keeping an eye on them to make sure that they, they are survive. And, and we're sure we have the, the manpower basically to do this. Um, <laughs> It, it, it'll be tight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And other what we do in the specifications for the project is that, that there's a, a one year period of time that when the landscape contractor installs these trees, they'll, they'll be coming from a nursery. Um, our landscape architect will be tagging them at the nursery and then they'll be installed. And there's a one year maintenance period where the contractor is taking on that responsibility um, to maintain them for that first year and replacing any trees that um, that die or, or become damaged in that first year. Do our arborists and others have any and our shade tree folks or anybody else in any of our staffing have any say over uh, the specification of those trees, the, the native uh, component, the uh, diversity of the trees, um, uh, you know, the suitability for those areas. Who, who takes charge of what those trees actually are? Um, and I, I think what happens is typically we, uh, so Matt would specify uh, a number of tree species and locations. Um, and generally we present them to shade tree, but they don't, every time we've gone before them, they do not want to be responsible for selecting the trees, but they will prove what they are. Uh, so we'll have Matt work with our arborist um, to ensure there's appropriate mixes uh, okay. so that they can make a, a recommendation before going to the shade tree commission. I, that, that is a huge aspect of, uh, you know, not only the demolition essentially of of the trees that are there, but uh, in woodland maintenance. Uh, so, and, and as you're saying, riparian buffer. So that, that is really critical. Also, if, and, and what's, what's done is done, but since we've revised or are in the process of approving a revision to the plan, going forward, I would hope that there's also an eye out to if there are um, slight deviations in the pathway as we as we move it through the wooded areas to avoid you know really the the specimen type trees uh, you know let let's let's do that um, all right uh, do we have any other concerns or questions to raise before we Ask for a motion. Okay, let's have a motion. I'll move that uh, we approve uh, the additional funding for the, the planning based on the, the, the changed alignment uh, with conditions that there will be both traffic study and, and uh, uh, traffic study, stormwater, management and also um, some involvement of the township in uh, tree selection and, and, uh, and maintenance moving forward. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank okay. you, Mr. Ludwig. Thanks, Thank everyone. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, item 5B, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners authorize execution of a facility usage agreement between Cheltenham Township and Salis University for an indoor pickleball program subject to review by the township solicitor. Um, and I know this has been going, you know, this negotiation and planning has been going on for some time. Um, and I wanna thank both our parks and rec folks, as well as Cheltenham Pickleball, as well as Salis University, we're working on all of this. Um, 
do any of those parties want to say, I mean, we know, we know essentially we've seen uh, a copy of the agreement. Uh, is there any overview that anybody needs to state, you know, just for the public record? Anybody, any of those parties want to speak? I think it's getting late, we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions or discussion from the board? Yes, yeah. uh, President Norris. Uh, Madam Chairperson, just a question. Um, I know Salas and I appreciate Salas is providing the facility uh, free of charge. Uh, my question in the con as, uh, is that it states in the contract as a service in lieu of taxes. Does this change uh, any previous uh, agreements as far as uh, the pilot program? I would say not to my knowledge. Has a value been assigned to this? Or is this just some random value they're going to assign to offset the tax obligation otherwise? Yeah, I, I don't know that um, there's been any discussion with respect to the existing pilot or costs associated with this value. Well, I, 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 I look, I like the whole program, but if they're going to say as a service in lieu of taxes, it should have some value. Because if, if, for instance, they were going to make a pilot contribution of X thousand dollars, and then they're saying, and this is instead of part of that, or in addition to it, it should have a value, I would imagine. I'm chairperson. Yeah, go ahead. Um, given what uh, the penurious nature of uh, the Salas contribution, uh, which was in fact represented to us that would be um, increased for this year, and I'm not sure that we've gotten a commitment. I think the fact is that um, a goodwill gesture would be that Salas, you know, does this, uh, you know, in recognition of their additional obligations to Cheltenham rather than it, it's made in lieu of increasing their contribution. Uh, I don't want to get into a, a, a competitive issue with Salas and Arcadia, but obviously, um, a, a, you know, a gesture is, is a great thing. And we do want to expand the availability of courts for pickleball. And there's some other opportunities that, are, that will be coming before us. But I also don't want to, um, I don't want to accommodate what would be an avoidance of an expanding commitment to the township that we've asked for for a number of years that on multiple occasions, Salas has asked the township to, um, to take uh, responsibility and represent them with a number of the, the state finance agencies. And here's an opportunity or, or, or a situation where there is a uh, a gesture that is available or sell us to demonstrate generosity. I would hate to think that it's being done to avoid uh, expanding their fiscal commitment to the township. So I'd raise that and ask if there's anybody here from Salas who would be uh, ready to answer it. Uh, not because we want to deny the expansion of the pickleball courts, but there are bigger issues in this municipality. The other thing I'd remind the board and the residents about is we're still in disputes about uh, the obligation for something um, in the stormwater management fee uh, with Salas and uh, many of the properties that uh, reside on that estate. So I'm not comfortable just going forward approving something without knowing whether there's anything other than generosity behind the proposal or the offer by Salas University. Forgive me my skepticism, but I'm in a position of having gone through this with this board the last couple of years and, and making sure mm -hmm. that as much protection uh, and as much as uh, we can, you know, we can expect and, and help um, from our, you know, partnering educational institutions that those things are covered off on. So thank uh, you, Madam Chairman, for my pontificating. If I can, Mr. Arman. We have, a, we have a meeting scheduled with Salas later this month, so that might be able to clarify some of these things. Well, I, I, there's a time element to Commissioner Arman. Yeah, uh, so my suggestion, at least for that paragraph, and I share uh, Commissioner Zygmafeld's concerns, th there should just be a period after free of charge. Yeah, right? I was going to say this. <laughs> sort of the yes. easiest way to do that. Um, yes. But but my, my, uh, my questions go beyond that. Um, the, the, uh, the first is about 
um, the indemnification from the township. Um, Allison or perhaps someone on staff, do we know whether that is going to result in an increased cost to the township? They do not. Um, we can look into it. Yeah, so I, I am extremely concerned about that. Um, I think that, uh, you know, look, um, uh, um, uh, well, let's just leave it. I, I am concerned about that. And, and clearly, uh, the paragraphs one and two um, also uh, require an increased cost to the township because it uh, demands that the township provide staff for, um, it looks like, uh, every day except Friday and Sunday. Um, and I'm not sure what that entails, but it seems like a fairly significant uh, amount of staff time uh, for for the um, uh, for the monitoring and supervising of residents. Something that I'm not sure we have in any other uh, any other arrangement. So um, I, I have some uh, serious reservations about uh, th this notion of. Uh, free space, but and it'll only cost you X number of dollars, right? So, um, so I, I have a I have a lot of reservations about this this agreement, and uh, and frankly, the, the, the whole thing. If, if if Salas wants to make an arrangement with Cheltenham Pickleball to ho to host them, well, then they should just do it. Um, I, I don't understand why the the township has to expend a whole lot of costs in order for that to happen. Um, Commissioner, I. If Kelly is still on, um, ask her to kind of jump in and see if she can uh, explain, you know, the, the type of uh, arrangement. I believe the township often will do things like this where um, they'll make an arrangement with somebody to rent space, but also have to say the, the school district and have township staff cover things like this, staffing the event and the activity. Yes, that's correct. Um, when we would use the school for, say, our pool, our swim lessons, we would have to have our staff available there to let people in and out <clears throat> and run the program. When we had our dance classes at the high school, I had to have staff there to monitor people coming in and out of the building. Um, the yeah. Go ahead. No, you, you go. Keep, keep going. I thought you were done. Okay, what I was going to say also was that um, even with our agreements with the Cheltenham School District, we have to have the insurance policy also. We worked with other mules for that information. I'm not sure what the cost is. I can reach out to her and find out, um, you know, how much that is going to be costing the township for the uh, insurance to use, Salas. Right. And, and when we use the, the high school and the schools for those events, those participants pay the township for uh for for the the program right um correct and we'll still be receiving fees from the Cheltenham Township Pickleball Group registrations as well okay thank you mm -hmm. yeah and that was what I, I was going to say this is very similar in many of those ways to other ways that uh the parks department conducts its programs at at shared sites uh, and they're looking out to do more of this, not less, um, because it's a more efficient use of facilities and because it gives more opportunities to residents and frankly, to bring in more revenue for the department. Um, but I see uh, Dan George has his hand up um, representing Cheltenham Pickleball. I don't know about Salas yet, but go ahead, uh, Mr. George. Uh, so let me just address the uh, question that Commissioner Arvin raised about staffing. Uh, the practice that we have followed in all of our programs, regardless of whether they're on township facilities or in the indoor um, time of the year uh, in uh, school facilities, is that we have uh, people within the program who volunteer as what we call court leaders. Um, 
and they have a number of different uh, responsibilities that they st uh, that they offer to um, support uh, when they're uh, present at a facility event uh, that Chelton at Pickleball is, is running. Uh, and I don't believe that this would be any different uh, in this case, except that it's not on either school department facilities or township facilities. It would be the same type of programming, same type of responsibilities, same equipment, uh, which we, by the way, use and school department uh, premises as well. It's the same equipment. Uh, so there's no increase in cost with respect to equipment. There is no cost for staffing. Um, I'm not sure what other costs we're, we're um, concerned about other than perhaps the insurance, uh, which I don't know what uh, particularly that would um, require. And the, the one key point I would raise in the agreement that I have uh, 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 maybe a question about, I'm not sure if it's an issue, uh, is in uh, item three of the proposed agreement, uh, where it asks that uh, Salas, um, that Salas is asking that the township name Salas as an additional insured. Currently, the certificate of insurance that we were provided uh, by um, Heather Samuels through the insurer uh, to give to them, which they have, uh, does not do that. Um, and so my feeling is that I don't know that we need to incur that obligation. And I don't know if there's an additional cost associated with that. I think Heather would have to speak to that. Um, I think she may be on uh, the meeting right now. So maybe we can just get that answered. Yeah, we, we can we can wait to see if she pops on. But uh, Mr. George, thank you for that. Um, and and uh, honestly, the um, the notion that Cheltenham Pickleball uh, as an organization would sort of be the quote unquote staff person, uh, I, I think, you know, is appealing. Um, but but that's not unfortunately what this agreement says. Um, and to the extent it could be modified to uh, reflect what you've described, I think I think that makes it um, a, a much better a much better arrangement. Um, in in terms of the uh, in terms of the insurance, you, uh, you know, cost is always a factor. Maybe it's negligible. Maybe it's covered by the fees. I don't know. Um, but but there's also a uh, indemnification clause in there that um, uh, I don't know is if that's, you know, typical uh, that, that we have with other uh, facilities that are, that are used within the township. Perhaps that's something that our solicitor would look at. I know this is subject to review by the solicitor, but, but that would be certainly a question that, um, uh, th that I would have. But, but to your point about the staff, th that definitely makes it more appealing, at least to me. If, if I may add, um, when we have groups and organizations that use um, township space, they have to list us as the additional insurer, and um, it would be considered standard policy for us to list somebody else as additional insurer if we're using their space. Yeah, that, that's not an unusual, as far as I can tell, it's not an unusual situation. Whether we do it or not, I don't know, but... Um... But but I know that that does happen. You know, fr frankly, uh, in 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 my office, we 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 name the landlord as an additional insured uh, for our insurance as well. So um, that that does happen. But um, but I think there are other questions as well. So it sounds like I just I'm trying to move this forward, and I don't. Was there anybody here from Salas who can uh, speak to? Salas's end of the, I'm not seeing anybody. Um, it sounds like as the, uh, as the statement there says, uh, there are several questions there um, that need to go, go by our attorney still and a couple of wording revisions and a couple of questions about um, the cost, if any, or the in additional indemnification. So um, we have another meeting next week. 
Um, I have no particular, because of the parallels to other agreements with other entities, I have no problem moving that we move forward conditional on satisfactory um, uh, responses from, you know, and, and changes to the, the wording. Um, think that would be acceptable, team? I assume we table it to next week, see if we get some of their answers. Till next week. I would object to, to not, uh, to moving forward. I think it needs to be tabled. Yeah, and, and those issues that have been raised by myself, Commissioner Armand, et cetera, need to be uh, need to be further investigated. Have to have a le legal opinion. Have to ha make sure that we're covered. Uh, that no indemnification obligations and expenses fall on the township above and beyond what quote unquote is routine. Okay. Well, that does sound like a majority. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Brockington. No, I agree. And then the okay. the, the service in lieu of taxes. Too. I mean, that was still kind of hanging out there also. Okay, so I think I think we have some marching orders uh, to involve our solicitor, get back uh, perhaps with uh, both uh, the parks, our parks folks, our pickleball folks, and to, with Salas, iron out those, uh, and I guess the insurance as well. So um, iron those out and we'll hope to see it uh, on next week's agenda. Uh, so we'll, that is tabled and we'll move on to item. And thank you all very much for the time. Yeah, Commissioner uh, Holland. Yep, Matt, Madam Chair, just a, a comment on loosely related to the situation. So I had an opportunity to participate um, in a pickleball event, event through, uh, through a work uh, situation uh, that was held at the Upper Dublin um, uh, tennis center, racket center. Uh, and there were a lot of pickleballers there from the pickleball community. And, um, you know, come to find out that uh, Sheltonham Pickleball has a very uh, strong and positive uh, reputation in the pickleball okay. community. So just wanted to share that and, uh, and pass that on to Dan as well, which I'm sure he probably already knew. Thank you. And it is, thank you for saying that. It is, it is known to be also uh, frankly, if you look at our budget again, uh, it is an income producer. Uh, so it is an asset to the township. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think we can uh, have some positive um, aspirations for next week. Thank you. Uh, item six uh, for public affairs. Uh, any announcements? I'm sure. Commissioner Armin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I should have brought it up earlier, but um, uh, my first announcement is that, as everybody knows, we, we had an election yesterday where many township facilities were utilized as polling places, which put um, Alan Brown on high alert. And uh, boy, did he uh, live, live up to the expectations. Uh, uh, I know that in my ward, we had at least one uh, sort of facilities issue. It got real dark uh, uh, right at the end of voting and, and Alan got out there and made sure the lights came on. So uh, in, in, in very, very quick fashion. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Alan and uh, uh, for, for making, making sure that all our facilities were available for everyone who wanted to vote uh, yesterday. Um, the other announcement I wanted to make is that um, in Glenside as uh, is uh, typical this time of year. Uh, we have small business Saturday coming up right after uh, Thanksgiving. That is the kickoff of Winterfest. And then the formal Winterfest in, uh, in Glenside is gonna happen on uh, Friday, December the 2nd. So uh, if you are uh, getting your holiday shopping uh, list together, um, you can fill uh, most, if not all of it, by shopping at the great shops of downtown Glenside. So thank you. Where I guess you could also say uh, there were Powerball tickets on sale as well. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. And someday there will still be I mean, it's <laughs> ongoing. But uh, yeah, and I also had wanted to make a remark about uh, 
all who contributed time, labor, and commitment to making sure that the elections uh, in Cheltenham were, were conducted with civility and safely uh, and uh, just wonderful, wonderful events. So thank you. Um, Citizens Forum for Public Affairs. Okay, I'll move for adjournment. Uh, stay tuned for uh, finance. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you.